warm greetings from for the day i am mr tushar warke on behalf of genex a division of hitro healthcare welcome you all to this cme a tofacitinib and indian clinical experience before that let me take the privilege of introducing hitro healthcare limited hitro healthcare is a pharmaceutical manufacturing company headquartered at hyderabad we from past 25 years aim to improve people's quality of life with our product line and a continuous research and development process hitro healthcare with 36 state of the art manufacturing units is amongst the largest manufacturers of arv apis and finished dosage forms in the world with comprehensive 300 plus portfolio of products and vertically aligned business model for uplifting the human life at the time of pandemic also sir whether it was a bird flu or more recently covid 19 hitro healthcare was the first company to serve the nation by launching oseltamivir and remdesivir that is covid 4 without wasting any time most more recently sir hitro healthcare has launched first satellite for crop monitoring and maritime surveillance which would not only benefit the existing or current generation but also future generations to come sir we at genex a division of hitro healthcare is committed to achieve customer satisfaction providing products and services of highest quality we strive hard to improve quality of life of patients by catering to their therapies like dermatologicals emollients facial sheet masks, anti-acne, and many more. So today, I consider a great honor to welcome the speaker and moderator for today's webinar, Professor Dr. D.G. Saple, sir. Dr. D.G. Saple, sir, doesn't need any introduction. He is a fellow of John Hopkins University, uh, USA, and pioneer and researcher in HIV AIDS in India, and pioneer in treating tinea fluconazole 150 milligram daily doses. He is a past president of IDL Maharashtra branch and ex-president of College of Physicians and Surgeons. He has many uh, papers to his credit with 50 plus peer-reviewed publications, chapters in medical textbooks and delivered more than 1,270 lectures across the country and presented at over 108 international events. So I request Saple sir to start the proceedings, introduce the, our expert panelist and take this session ahead. So over to Saple, sir. Thank you, Tushar, for nice introduction. But I was happy you made it short because sometimes they keep on reading everything. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, today you're going to talk about use of tofacitinib in dermatology. And very, we are very lucky. We have opinion leader across our country, Dr. Partha Sardi from Hyderabad, Dr. Venkat, Venkatram Mysore from uh, Bangalore, Brigadier Manas from Delhi and Calcutta, and Vinay Singh is from Delhi. So we have very good opinion leader, and I hope and I'm sure we'll get right information about their clinical experience of using tofacity. Talking about Dr. Partha Sardi, he has got rich experience for the last 31 years. He was selected as the best doctor or he was honored as a best doctor award while working in King Khalid Hospital, Saudi Arabia. And what is important about Dr. Partha Sardi is so much committed for the dermatology that he started DNB program in students of dermatology in South India in the corporate hospital, because previously it was in the government hospital. So that is a very good achievement. So we'll have Dr. Partha Sardi, then Dr. Venkatram Mysore, of course, he also doesn't need any introduction. But Dr. Venkatram is known for the working for combination as a dermatologist, as a head transplant, dermatopathologist, and so many things. And of course, he's a member and advisor for national and international level. But what I want to talk about Dr. Venkatra Mysore is what I know. According to me, he's a person who, who is a perfect example or model for all other dermatology. The reason being, he has developed his own institution develop his own family, and he has not spared his major contribution for our national association. 
that is a very very great contribution because many times people develop themselves in because of career they neglect family and because of family or their own self they may not take much part in the association so dr venkatraman uh, venkatram is known for fulfilling all three fields so we'll have dr venkatram then go to manav chatterji manav chatterji observe in many national conferences you open any topic he will have the right opinion and he is affiliated at base uh, consultant dermatologist of base hospital delhi but he is a visiting command hospital at kolkata of course there are a lot of publications he has got a lot of awards but what i want to talk about him i have found means at least when i listen to him there are many times the opinion leaders are there many times they talk of theory but i found he is he is one of the dermatology who has got hands on means a practical experience plus theory so that's what i know dr manav chatterji coming to dr vinay singh who vinay singh is from delhi last he was the president of the delhi iid well and he is very much interested uh, a very much interested in the immunology so definitely we'll have a lot of contribution from him also and after this introduction i think we'll start with a subject that is topacitinib indian experience and i think i i'll just see now we know i'll start my talk we know that new molecular targeted therapeutics are changing our dermatology therapy and one of them now is available as janus kinase inhibitor so what is janus kinase is a transducer and activator of transcription it is intracellular signaling pathway upon which many different pro inflammatory signaling pathway converge and numerous inflammatory dermatoses are driven by this soluble inflammatory mediator so this mediator is responsible for many inflammatory dermatoses and if you inhibit this definitely you will be able to use this in many inflammatory dermatoses so that is the basic of this newly targeted molecular therapy so today we are going to talking about the jack inhibitor so what is jack inhibitor jack inhibitor is a immune modulator and he has got the family of jack1 jack2 jack3 and tyk2 where is interference in the signaling pathway of lymphocyte that is the basic action of jack inhibitor then how it acts there are two part one is the cytokine and the receptors when the cytokines gets activated and they combine with the receptors there is a phosphorylation of the jack when there is phosphorylation jack it gets combined with the stat and further phosphorylation they form or they come together and form what is called dimerization or dimer and these dimers get translocated in the nucleus and start transcription that's how and that is the action of jack inhibitor this is shown in the same thing figure is the same thing that if the jack in uh, jack inhibition is there then this action will not take place and there won't be any production of cytokines or inflammatory cytokines that's how the, that is a mode of action there are many jack inhibitor topacitinib gruxolitinib baricitinib oclacitinib but today we are going to talk about topacitinib which blocks jack 1 and 3 more than jack 2 then any drugs when you start any drug you got to know little bit metabolism as a clinician we won't understand much but we should know little bit his half life is metabolism the half life is 3 hour but the metabolism we see it is through cyp3a4 and this enzymes has got a major contribution 
and little bit with CYP2C19. And it is excreted through renal, but in a renal doses, there are hardly any, any changes irrespective of the age, weight, or gender or race. So that's a metabolism. Then this metabolism is very important because nowadays, nowadays we know the patients are living long and they are on all multi-pharmacy or many drugs. After 60, they are on many drugs, either with a renal problem, cardiac problem, liver problem, and so on. So you got to know about the drug-drug interaction. When talking about the drug-drug interaction, we have to keep in two things mind that whether is a whether is a inhibitor or sorry or or, or is a in, inhibitor or is a inducer if it is the inhibitor the drugs concentration will go up and there will be more side effects it is an inducer the drug will be excreted more and there may be what is called subclinical uses and we may have to increase the drugs or there are inducer, there will be more toxicity. So these are the only two things you have to keep in mind. When you're prescribing drug, you have to see that patients are taking the drugs which are inducers or inhibitor before prescribing any drugs. Secondly, when you co-administer drugs, it increases the toxicity if it, you're using inhibitors. So the drugs, like there are certain immunosome drugs they said co-administration is not yes, recommended. Yeah. yeah. So before starting any drug, we got to screen this drug, uh, screen the patient whether patient is going to tolerate or he is going to develop any side effect. For that, tofacitinib, what we require is a CBC, renal function test, liver function test, fasting lipid profile is very important. Underlying infection like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, or in our country is tuberculosis. Then, of course, in monitoring, what is required after one month is CBC, HGOT, HGPT, serum creatinine, and lipid profile. And same thing can be repeated after three months. This is for the monitoring. So when you prescribe the drugs, we got to know whether they are giving any side effects. We got to watch for this. First is the infection, mostly they get uh, nasopharyngitis, upper uh, respiratory tract or the urine tract infection, viral infection like herpes zoster or herpes virus, GI, uh, blood changes, blood count alteration, and rarely they can get thromboembolic events or solid cancer is very rare. So we have to look for. Another thing before starting drug, there are certain contraindications you got to know. So what are these contraindications? Any active infection like cellulitis, sepsis, bacterial infection, or tubercular, active infection. Positive serology for hepatitis B, C, and HIV. Hematological abnormality. There you have to look for the lymphocytes and neutrophils. Absolute lymphocyte less than 400 and neutrophil count less than not 100,000. Severe hepatic impairment, hypersensitive to the drugs, expose the patient to the TB endomic, and chronic lung disease or interstitial lung disease, and patient with a risk of GI tract perforation, and of course, malignancy, the uh, pregnancy and the lactation. These are the things we have to take in account before starting these drugs, which is, I think, it is useful for so many other immunosuppressive drugs. Then before prescribing, you got to know whether the drug is safe or not. So if you see the safety profile, they have followed it 9.5, uh, 9 that is nine and a half years, and they found there is hardly any incidences of malignancy, that is 0.8 which is known in otherwise the patient is not on the drug. About herpes zoster is 3.4 and cardiovascular is 0 0.3. And these are comparable with even the patients who are not on these drugs. Similar, it is the 48 month studies done with the rheumatoid, rheumatoid association 
and that found the drug is quite safe. But in our country, TB being in, uh, endemic, all of us who are worried whether the patient will land up in the tuberculosis and if you land up in the tuberculosis, what you should do. So before starting, we must rule out tuberculosis that is called latent tuberculosis. Of course, active tuberculosis, you'll know, patient will have fever, loss of weight, loss of appetite, patient will give. But latent tuberculosis to rule out, you have to get certain tests like chest X-ray, ESR, and Montux test. Of course, they said you can get IGRA test or TB gold test, but TB gold test, our country is not much useful. I'm going to cover in the next one. So these are the three things we'll give and the history that will give an idea whether the patient is having tuberculosis, latent tuberculosis or active tuberculosis. That's how it looks. There are many articles now. This is one of the articles where patients were given uh, tofacitinib and they were screened for tuberculosis. But here they have given isonex as a prophylaxis for nine months. Of course, and tofacitinib was started after one month of isonex. Otherwise, and they found at the end of seven years, there was no incidence of tuberculosis. Same thing, this is another study, seven year study. Again, they found there were four patients developed TB, but in this study, they did not go for the screening before starting tofacitinib. Only they looked for the active tuberculosis and that is the probability they develop tuberculosis. So now we, we have got the information about tofacitinib. Now, what are the conditions it can be used? Of course, atopic, alopecia areata, vitiligo, and psoriasis, inflammatory condition can be used. In alopecia areata talking, there are 254 published articles, and what they said, it shows promising outcome of use of JAK inhibitor or tofacitinib in alopecia areata. Then sometimes there is a combination that is alopecia with the hair, uh, loss of hair. And this drug is useful, they have shown in both the condition. Then this drug is systemic, but now they are thinking of the local or topical applications where they use tofacitinib 2%. And in this case, in alopecia areata, at the end of eight months, they found there is a good hair growth but there are questions which is our leaders are going to answer. So now topical 2% is also available. In psoriasis, again, there are about 330 studies and they found using this tofacitinib, almost 75% improvement in psoriasis area and severity index. Vitiligo, in vitiligo, again, there are 53 studies, there are limited study and they found it is useful, but it takes longer time. For example, this is the patient where they are seen vitiligo, if you say the improvement start after five months. Atopic dermatitis, again, atopic dermatitis, there are 91 public art, uh, published article, and they found it is quite effective in bringing down the itching, anxiety, and irritability. This is the case where the atopic dermatitis plus hair loss and they found the atopic dermatitis completely settled out with the full hair growth. So these are the example. So now we, we, we know what is it, where we should be used. So now I'll open for uh, opinion leader. So please, can you put on uh, your, un can you unmute? All, all, all opinion leader. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Please yes. unmute. Yes. Yeah. So we'll start with Dr. Parth Sardi. What are the indication would like to use topacitinib? Yeah. 
Uh, sir, apart from what you told about alopecia areata, vitiligo, and then um, atopic dermatitis, there are so many off-level indications we go for. I mean, we use uh, tafacitinib. Uh, I myself used some of, in some of the lichen planus cases. Uh, in yes. cases of acne reticulite, which have given a very good response, which have given very good response. Apart from that, of course, psoriasis, I have used it, uh, found to be not that useful. But other cases are granular manulaire, bioderma gangrenosum, even um, connective tissue disorders, where I tried in one of the patients, uh, described by dermatosis, I tried. And dermatomyositis, SLE, these are things which we can um, try to facilitate. Um, so I think the options are quite good. Uh, I think uh, we should try and uh, see the response. But my cases of acting reticulite and lichen planus, uh, atopic dermatitis, in these cases, the response was quite good. And the remaining cases, I have to see uh, their, how the response will be. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parasadi, for sharing. And you agreed that offline, there are many conditions where you can use it. So what are the indications? These are the usual indications. But the, uh, these are the usual indications. And there are mode of action, but I'm not going to that. But as Dr. Parthadeya said, there are offline indications like dermatomyositis, chronic actinic, erythema multiforme, so many other conditions, lupus, so many other conditions where you can use it. And even the pyoderma gangrene has mentioned. So there are a lot of indications. But now I'm, I'm coming next to Dr. Venkatram. Many people are worried about the offline indication. So what is your opinion? In my opinion, yeah. any new drug, we have to be careful. Online or offline, that is a different issue. And a drug which has effects such as tofacitinib with a wide range of effects on different immunological processes, we have to be even more careful. The other issue is that unlike biologics, which are very expensive, this is a relatively cheap drug with the result that the scope for scope for use or misuse is greater. We are already seeing patients, you prescribe them for one month, they are coming back after four months for having used it. Hence, there is a need for being careful about these drugs. But having said that, one advantage of any drug which is being introduced nowadays is there are fairly good guidelines. So, we have to go by those guidelines, do the investigations which are necessary, and then follow up and document the cases. So, we should be careful, but we should not be hesitant. There is a difference between the two. Careful, yes, but don't be hesitant, don't be timid. You must still use it. That is what we are there for. I think, thank you, thank you, Dr. Mysore. This is a wonderful thing you are given because one of the things you pointed out is a very important once you prescribe, and this is the drug where we have to be careful. Patient, they keep on taking themselves because they feel better and they land up into all toxicity. So I remember Dr. Fitzpatrick has written long back, about 20 years before, in his book, metotrexia drugs should not be prescribed, it should be dispensed. Because that's how we can keep the control. So even my suggestion is, tofacidine drug, you spend a little bit more time and dispense for your, from clinic, so, we can keep the track with the patient is developing side effects and most of the side effects are reversible. So I entirely agree with Dr. Venkatram Mysore that we have to be very careful, but we should not get scared, but we should not be unnecessarily complacent. So now we'll go for the next opinion leader. I think Dr. Manas, I'm going to show my patient. The, the, this is the patient a 45-year-old male patient of chronic plaque psoriasis is also comorbidity, diabetes, hypertension, 
is on various drug or anti diabetic and uh, hypertension uh, initially was given topical therapy but there was no improvement then this patient i started on cyclosporine and when you start your cyclosporine patients are very happy but after some time their blood pressure started increasing serum creatinine started increasing so what we did we we switch over to methotrexate when switch over to methotrexate he developed leukocytopenia and we could uh, we had to uh, discontinue the drugs so manas how you are going to manage this patient in your clinic uh, sir what is the what is the body surface area sir uh he has got almost 45% okay he we yeah. used uh, two drugs uh, two uh, drugs and two drugs have uh, uh, we'll not say failed but uh, two drugs we cannot use anymore so this is one patient where uh, my first option of course would be to go for a biologic uh, if uh, the patient is unable to afford a biologic then uh, to facilitate would not be a bad idea but of course my first choice uh, would be to use uh, uh, a potent biologic agent such as secizumab that would be my or secizumab one of these two drugs uh, il17 blockers but if the patient is not uh, affording for uh, that then of course to facilitate the only issue with topazinib is two one you said is blood pressure is elevated not to fast in mean psoriasis acts at slightly higher dosages as dr anchala mentioned he did not get good results the reason is that the dosage which we use where we get results in let us say alopecia areata which is 5 mg twice a day will not get response in psoriasis the psoriasis psoriasis you will need higher dosages that is 10 to 15 mg twice in a day below those dosages uh, responses are not good so because of that reason one hypertension uh, to fast sleep can increase bp at those dosages and you felt that you had he had some hematological problems uh, you had uh, he had like diabetes he had and some, hypertension uh, said some leukopenia or something sir uh, no that after a metotrexate uh, he, he had some yeah. hematological abnormalities that because of yeah, metotrexate leukopenia so yeah, yes so uh, so the, be, be, you see with so as i said with a drug like to fast sleep these are two things which can happen one at higher dosages yes uh, there is uh, there are reports of raised blood pressure though of course i have not seen at the dosages i have used uh, but uh, the the other thing as i said is uh, leukopenia and and you know hematological adverse effects so therefore that is my only concern with using to fast sleep here so if it resolves completely in terms of as you know you see Yeah, but yeah, but the next time we need to fix it. As I said, my first choice would be uh, an IL and PL. Yeah, I think there are certain disturbances. But if the patient is yeah. not able to afford, then I go for to pass. So uh, Manas, I entirely agree. the patient is affording the first Hello. choice is a biological but patient is not affording as Hello. dr manas said we we started with topazidinim 5 mg yes, bid yes sir can so yeah, and it is not be what my plan would be because at the end of four weeks everything clear so i was shocked because this was my first patient so we i think this is one of the indication you can use topazidinib we'll go for the next patient next patient is for yeah dr vinay dr vinay this yes, patient sir. of psoriasis they come with inflammatory lesions and they want yes, something some, some immediate results yeah some so what we call is a rescue therapy not necessarily the extensive but yes, some even there are less number of lesions they want it should be start improving immediately so the question was asked can you use topazidinib as a rescue therapy cyclosporine Sir, is well known for the rescue therapy correct 
Yes, sir. Cyclosporin and uh, acetretin we can use as a rescue regimen for very short period. And uh, we can use tofacitinib also, but it has to be used in a higher dose. If the patient's rest of the parameters are within normal limits, then why not we can use uh, tofacitinib also? Uh, I entirely agree. Dr. Vinay Singh has brought out the point that tofacitinib can be used, but at the higher doses, that is very important. Higher yes, doses, sir. and this is one of my patient who started and within two weeks, see so much there is a uh, regression of the disease patient is very happy so can be used now the next again we'll go to dr parsadi this is a patient of pustular psoriasis she is having for last two to three years suffering she has uh, of, of course she is a patient again a diabetic patient diabetic and the hypertension she is taking systemic steroid on and off but when this type of patient comes to your clinic, how we are going to manage this? Because we know pustular psoriasis is the most difficult to manage. The Dr. Parsardi? Yes, uh, Dr. Dr. Sir. The thing is, um, the already this is on steroids. That is what you have told. And this is hypertension and diabetes also. The best drug will be, even though she has hypertension, the best drug will be uh, cyclosporine yes. along with the steroid. Are a methotrexate, you can add methotrexate. Are the best thing, the best of the best is the biological. Either IL 17 inhibitors are the best. Actually, you have treated uh, with Xyxymab, I have treated pustular psoriasis. With yeah, I have you know. treated pustular psoriasis with very good, uh, with very good response for both of these drugs. That is what I usually do, those who can offer. And the first thing, if at all you want to use, it will have a 10 milligram BAD doses you have to use, or at least 15 milligram BAD doses you have to use, and they they have very serious side effects with these with the with those doses. So that's why I usually don't go for trifacitinib in these pustular psoriasis cases. Uh, other than that, it will take a lot of time. Trifacitinib is not done in the work in two weeks. It works more than four, four, four to five, six weeks is necessary for any uh, trifacitinib to respond. So my my choice will be the biological uh, doctor. Sir. No, uh, thank you because Pesalizumab is supposed to be the best one for the pustular psoriasis, but you know it's not available. So now what is choice is left and the steroids, I think there are a lot of limitations. So this patient initially we started with the particular steroid with the antibiotic, but slowly, slowly we tapered the steroid and maintain on tofacitinib. And you see, at the age of 20 months, the patient is taking tofacitinib alternate day, and she is maintaining very well. So this is my experience. So I shared it. I think Dr. Uh, Venkat or uh, Manas, you want to add anything to this pustular psoriasis? Uh, no. So as I as you said, this Mr. is not available because of that reason. Of course. Uh, you know, the drug of first choice, which we were using as a first choice were, of course, steroids and cyclosporin. And so these were the drugs, uh, you know, which we were using. And now after the biologics, of course, uh, the anti-IL-17 drugs, as Dr. Anchala has mentioned. Uh, uh, tofasinib, uh, you know, I will probably not use it, uh, use tofasinib in, in pustular, so I, I would rather I would not have used it till now. But seeing your good results, I seemed, I feel encouraged. Because, uh, you know, uh, I mean, otherwise, I would probably not think of tofasinib in a patient with pustular psoriasis. Uh, you know, I would probably think higher dose acetratin even earlier, probably. Yes. You know, we need to, we need to understand acetratin yes. doesn't work in the regular dose in yes. pustular psoriasis. It works very, very well, but it requires a higher dose, 50 to 75 milligram. It will not yes. work at 25 milligrams. So I would probably think of acetratin earlier than to fast with this particular patient, but yeah. your results are very encouraging. Yeah, we can use acetatin, but uh, I think it takes time, but we are used in the maintenance, but we can use it. But so, sir, if you use it at a higher dose, it actually yeah. works much faster. Very fast. Yes, yes, yes. Entirely, entirely agree. The higher the dose is, like organ transplant, they give 30 to 40 milligram. Yes, I entirely agree. 
So we'll go for the next case. I I, I have a point yeah. here, Dr. Sapley. Yes. yes. Uh, I entirely agree with both uh, what Manas and Dr. Partha said. Tofacetinib, the response in psoriasis is not as dramatic as the other drugs, whether it is cyclosporine, methotrexate, or biologics. It takes time to work. And at, if you are giving 30, 40 milligrams, then you have to be even more cautious. And especially, in such case, particularly the case which you showed to Dr. Manas, acetatin and narrowband phototherapy, yes, that was would good. have been a very good choice in that patient. Yeah, I do agree. It really works very well. I also agree. As far as, the question, yeah, as, yes. far as yeah. postular psoriasis is concerned, I agree that rather than TOFA, the drug which Dr. Partha suggested, that is one thing which can be preferred. And acetidine also works well in postular psoriasis. Uh, now, thank you. Psoriasis, yeah. uh, TOFA, I think when there is arthritis, that is a much better choice. Yes. And if you have to give higher doses, then particularly with the elderly patient, then we have to become even more careful. Yes, sir. In all my cases yeah, of psoriasis, I have what I have found is that tofacitinib does not have give me that much response in psoriasis. But yes, when arthritis is associated, it gives good result. And once we are increasing the dose, then we have to take care of three things. One is leukopenia. Second is drop in hemoglobin, which is very fast in some of the patients. I have encountered and then we have to stop and third is raise in the uh, triglycerides rise in triglycerides from the baseline when i start that has to be taken if i am giving more than uh, 20 milligrams in a day or even 20 milligrams in a day uh, I found that it, it leads to some problems the other thing doctor uh, dr saple is venous thromboembolism yes, and higher yes. dosages in higher elder, dosages. elder individuals venous thromboembolism is an is a real issue with uh, it is. so we need to be careful with uh, these things yes people yeah correct correct yeah so thank you for that because i agree acetatin and uv therapy because see uv therapy also place like a bombay we can't afford because uh, anyway so i said why not to try this and the doses here given was 10 milligram BD initially, then 5 milligram and then alternate day. So I thought when there is no other option, I did it and the patient is very happy. So we'll go for the next case. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Mysur for you. It's a case of atopic dermatitis. He had a severe atopic dermatitis. Patient was given steroid initially but he had a comorbidity that is hypertension, history of angioplasty. Of course, there are no history of diabetes, but he got a relapse. Then we started his patient on cyclosporine. He was doing very well, but again, there was a relapse. So this patient is from Lucknow. We started on methotrexate. He could not tolerate. He could not tolerate. Then somebody started him on adalimumab. According to patients, six months, he was very good. He was very happy. But after six months, there was a relapse. So, Dr. Venkatram, how are you going to manage this patient? I think one of the better drugs for this would have been azathioprine. That would have controlled the atopic eczema much better. Yes. Rather than methotrexate or acetatin, I do not know why acetatin was given for... Yeah, I was also surprised with acetatin, actually. But are yes. you sure acetatin was used here? Yeah, other, thing, other thing is even adalimumab also. I don't know why yeah, adalimumab yeah, yes, Correct, 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 correct. That's right. Both adalimumab yeah. and acetretin we don't there use. Some mistake, for, I think. Yeah, there is some mistake. Sir, I think there is some mix up with the cases. Yeah. Yeah, they probably it has happened. Anyway, as far as that atopic eczema, azathioprine yeah. and of course dupilumab if it is available and if the patient yeah, can afford that it, one of the best that would be a drug. But yeah, availability cost yes. is a factor. Yeah. But yes, to, to facilitate it, yes. It can be tried. We have tried. Mysore, it works. Yeah, yeah. You you said azotaprim will be better drug. Correct. Correct. No, uh, nice one. So what what we did? We started this patient on tofacitinib, and after 15 days, the patient phoned me, doctor. Why not given this medicine before? So you know. Yeah, because I said the drug was not available, but I'm presenting this case. After one month, 
this patient started complaining of muscular pain started complaining of muscular pain so dr mysore what do you think of after tofacidinim we started after one month he said a body darad hai ye hai wo hai he said i am not ha happy with this Uh, no, Dr. Ma yeah. Myositis, whether it is a described side effect of tofacitinib, it is not a standard side effect that is mentioned usually. Yes, correct. Yeah. So, so I, 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 I agree with you. We have to think of myositis, which is not a common one. So we did his uh, CPK and LDH. They were in uh, uh, within the normal limit. So I was just thinking, as you were saying, rhabdo myelitis. Can I, can I make a comment, sir? Can I make a yes, comment? Yes, yes, sir, yes. Can yes, I yes, make man. a comment? Yeah. Sir, can I make a comment? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, joint pains are well described. Rhabdo myelitis again is well described. So these are two adverse effects which are quite well described with uh, with. Uh, so this patient no most likely yeah. is having rhabdo myelitis, which is in being induced by tofa. So I think the dosages oh, will have to be reduced. No, Stop Dr. Manas, and we can restart at lower dosages. Dr. Manas, if the patient is taking the uh, lipolytic agents, then there is a possibility of rhabdomyolysis. Otherwise, so, only myositis that has been described. They didn't describe rhabdomyolysis. No, no, no. rhabdomyolysis actually has been described as an adverse effect of tofacitinib, and at higher dosages, it's something which is well described. I mean. Um, uh, I think probably um, you know. I remember when I spoke in Kolkata regarding this drug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There also I mentioned rhabdomyolysis, and there also there was a discussion. But rhabdomyolysis is is a is a, is an accepted adverse effect. We know it happens. Know there are certain less. Yeah, I, think, uh, I, I, I think. Yeah, it happens in cyclosporin and the patient has a lipolytics. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I, maybe I, this patient might have been on lipolytics. Yes. No, yeah, but yeah, what were the yeah. muscle enzymes? Yeah. They were normal. You said no. No, yeah, they were yeah. normal. Yeah. That's why I'm coming to it. So you know, as a new beginner, we'll think of rhabdomyolysis. No. No, no. Even at the other beginning, no, we have not used, not used it. No, no, no. Even before that. I mentioned joint pain, so joint pains could happen even without rhabdomyolysis. So first is joint pain, second is rhabdomyolysis. So in these cases, we might must ask them for joint pains. Arthralgias are described, and of course rhabdomyolysis. If the if the muscle is normal, I will probably yeah, manage all all this as arthralgia only. Yeah, all of three, you are uh, absolutely right. As uh, Manas says, rhabdomyolysis is, is known with the tofacitinib. But as Dr. Parthasadhi says, if tofacitinib and this uh, this uh, atorvastatin, this drug should not be prescribed together. They will definitely go into muscle problem. And as Dr. Venkatram says. The, there has to be increase with the CPK and LDH. You can't have their normal. So you know, our rheumatologist they are using drugs three years earlier than. So I spoke one of the rheumatologists. So he said, "Sir, this is just like your rheumatism. You start rheumatism, and person come with the body ache, muscle ache, sometimes running nose, influenza-like symptoms. So influenza-like symptoms are there." Go ahead, don't reduce, and I I continue. So of course the message here I want to give that if you are not experienced, better to consult the expert person so we can get guideline. So this was not rhabdomyolysis. This was just influenza-like things. Shall we go for the next one? So th these are the patient of atopic doing good results. Yeah, of course the doses are higher, results are better. Then we'll come to Vinay Singh. This is the another yes, patient, yes. patient of the vitiligo, and extensive vitiligo. She is the daughter of one of my colleague, working with me in the hospital, and she said she has tried everything available. When he asked me, I said, "Look, new drug has come, and we started this drug, but after two months of the treatment." 
there was no improvement at all. So, Vinay Singh, what is your advice to this patient? Sir, if the patient is having extensive vitiligo, then the patient has to wait for some time for the tofa sedative to act on uh, her case. And we have to also we have to look into the matter whether the patient is having some thyroid issues or not. Oh, because, that thyroid uh, is normal. Yeah, we look for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if it is normal, then I think two months is a too early time for the patient to expect any result in a long standing vitiligo case because we know that vitiligo has got some autoimmune component as well. And uh, that is why I, I would re request the patient to s wait for some more time. If it is and not can, increasing, you can add pulse therapy. Or you can add pulse therapy. Of yes, you can add pulse therapy. You can add uh, narrow band. You can add poor therapy also. If the patient can, uh, you know, come for that uh, treatment. I think so, I think this patient probably, as you have rightly mentioned, as Doctor Vinay has rightly mentioned, I think the addition of narrow band would be a very good option in this case. Uh, how long has she had it with Ligo? Sir, I have some patients yeah. on uh, Vitiligo. Many, many, many years, there are no yeah. hypertension, there are no diabetes, a young 32 year old lady. Yeah. yeah. I so, think we can try it offer it in uh, but at yeah. the same time, we should temper the expectations of the patient. Yeah. 20 year old Vitiligo, yes. acral lesions are in areas are involved. She should yes. not expect yes. anything dramatic. Non non facial yeah, vitiligo does sir, not respond as patient. well as facial vitiligo. So yes, non facial sir. vitiligo is a problem. Comparatively, it's going to be a problem. Yes. So uh, Vinay and, and moreover, sir, extensive vitiligo, extensive vitiligo has a problem, sir. I have uh, I am using tofacitinib in uh, some limited uh, vitiligo uh, yes. patients who have limited areas of vitiligo. Some yes. and not never alone because I use tofacitinib with excimer laser or narrow band. So then it is giving very quick results in private practice. Uh, those patients who understand because patients of vitiligo they, they want very quick result overnight results, which is not yeah. possible yeah, alone with tofacitinib or any other. That's yeah. why Dr. Parsarde uh, uh, say uh, what Vinay, Vinay said is right. The effects start after four to five months of tofacitinib, not before that, yes. as you have mentioned. And the, I'm conducting this across the country for many. And the suggestion across the country is what Dr. Parsade says, tofacitinib a longer period with UVB, uh, UVB uh, therapy, that works better. That is the yes. opinion of the most of the dermatologists across the country. Yes, sir. So, yeah. And so, I, and think as, I think, sir, the thing is that non-facial vitiligo we must tell patients that uh, the response is not as good as in the facial vitiligo correct. or exposed area vitiligo. I think correct. that is one correct. we must yeah, tell counseling. patients. Yeah, counseling. Yes. Yeah. Ab initio. Yes. Sir. Yeah, this is one of my patients. She was worried, but she was on top of city and she has responded well. We are not given her uh, uh, UVB therapy, but then she has responded. But this was, as you said, this was the local lesion, not extensive lesion. Sir, but uh, the good thing about this patient, sir, is uh, you've seen the eyelashes have repigmented. Leukotrichia. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, leukotrichia yeah, is yeah, also. Okay, yeah, yeah correct, correct, correct. That's right. But this happens with two first second. I have seen that in many of patients. My areas of interest. That is one of my areas of interest. So I was looking at that and I was really <laughs> impressive. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, okay, Manas, you know, when you consider the fact that it works well in alopecia area, and if you link that to Vitligo, perhaps that is where the link is that it is working for Lycotrichia also. Yes. Yeah. Alopecia areata where you have white hair, they yes. respond and then they don't really white hair. Yeah, but it, yeah, if you see here, see it's showing the improvement of the eyelashes mm -hmm. also. Yeah. This is a theory. This is another patient of mine. He came, he said, Doctor, I'm taking so many therapy, nothing is happening. Started on tofacitinib. This is after two weeks. And this is after three months. So it was an excellent result. Patient was happy. But now many, many of us, we do not know how long we should continue, how. So I think Dr. Uh, Ven Venkatram Mysore, can you yeah. See, uh, elaborate on this? A couple points about uh, tofacitinib in total is, I think it is probably one of the brightest things that has happened in recent times. Nothing works as well as this. 
when it works it pro produces really gratifying results and for the first time we have got, got something which produces hair apart from steroids so that is one of the best things here and these patients totalis patients are usually younger patients so yes. we don't have to worry so much about all the vaccines and other things that yes. the, normally that is discussed having said this there are failures also some patients with long standing totalis and universalis may not work i have seen patients who did not work even at 20 mg or 30 mg to first study maybe yeah, some other are, jacket better is needed in you such you are absolutely right dr venkatram yeah. yeah. but you know we, we question is uh, 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 dr yeah, now i am coming to the question yeah, yeah how, correct how to taper it and how to stop it yes now, correct there are two That's guidelines right. for this you can either taper the dosage or make it less frequent but one of the best things i heard was there was a doctor from orissa who participated in one of the webinars he had a fairly large collection of alopecia patients on tofacitinib but what he said is as the result is achieved he also adds weekly methotrexate to such patients and he gradually starts tapering tofacitinib and maintains the patients on methotrexate and he showed excellent photographs and i have also started doing it and i think it works well because methotrexate doesn't add much to the immunosuppression and uh, caused by tofacitinib unlike other drugs that is one of the things which i can recommend alternately as you taper it you can make it to put the patient on weekly pulse steroid also so that yes. you stop the sir as uh, so yes, usually one, three, two years two years period we give that and myself and the drama Usually after two years, if you can give, and then later on taper it, that will be very good actually. That is what what I do in most of my cases. My patients do respond by one year, I am I am sure, but by then we taper it off to five milligram OD, and then continue it for quite number of another six months, something like that. Then only I am just stopping it. No, uh, what happens is when you taper it, people start getting new patches. Some of them. Yes. Yeah, yes. So that yeah, is what I am talking about. Sir, I think. Uh, yeah, doctor. Sir, uh, I think Mysore, we can. Uh, I am doing the same thing. Then switch over this patient to methotrexate. Methotrexate is an easy drug. We have got more experience, and we can continue for long period. Now, another next patient, Doctor Vinay Singh. This yes, patient of mine, he came with the loss of eyebrows. We started on tofacitinib, and after three months, he started getting eyebrows. He was very happy. But his next question was. sir what about my eyelashes he, he, he there was no improvement of eyelashes so sir, in his uh, yeah yes sir i can see that there is no improvement on his uh, right side of the mustache also yes, maybe the patient might not have complained but yes uh, this this is a possibility so for that uh, we can add uh, some topical bimetoprost lotion yeah for the eyelashes that helps and tofacitinib will definitely help again i went to literature found it takes about 6 to 7 months for eyelashes to improve so we have sir, to wait for longer period but yes. and add yeah correct of course of course we have to wait for any on sir basically for alopecia also the result does not start very quickly it takes long time to start on top set correct 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 that's why this is the another patient i think i'll go for the manas manas this is one of patient this patient he he, he is complained to us sir you started topacitinib but i have started losing hair and he came with this type of lesion so what do you think uh What is this alopecia? He, What do you think is alopecia? Seems in androgenic alopecia. I think yes. he's got androgenic alopecia. I mean, I yes, correct. This correct, correct, looks correct. like androgenic alopecia to me. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, androgenic right. alopecia. I I don't think we should ascribe it to tofacitinib. Yeah. Because uh, because it's probably a progression of AG which he's getting. I I I don't yeah. think androgenic yeah, alopecia okay. should be. Yeah, we 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 diagnose as a androgenic alopecia, but the patient he came with this. He said, "I'm losing bunches of hair." 
Okay, 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 yeah. okay. So he is basically having what he is having is he is having uh, probably he is having effluvium, acute telogen effluvium. He's, yes, he's correct, the, correct, correct. That's right. So then uh, we will need to evaluate for acute telogen effluvium. Yes, uh, correct. He had come to you for what, sir? Psoriasis. Adan? He had come this to you for This is the patient about two years before. This patient I have seen two years before. So uh, acute telogen effluvium, it could yes, have correct. various other causes. I yes, don't correct. think tofacitinib is the cause of telogen effluvium. It's until and unless we should see his counts. We should see his counts. If his counts are changing, then that could be one thing. So in these cases, look for cytopenias. I think I'm going to look for uh, cytopenias to see whether, uh, you know, that is, uh, that is one of the issues because other than that, acute telogen effluvium should not be because of telogen. I mean, because of uh, the drug. Yes. But definitely, uh, I would look at uh, I would look at counts, and uh, if there is a count issue, then that is something which we will need to be careful about. As you have suggested, Manas, we ask for history of any infection, and see what is said. This patient of COVID infection about two months back. Okay, so that is different. So that explains. That explains very yeah, well. Correct, correct. So you are thinking it that of course is well known. So I would probably evaluate any. Yeah. Yes, so correct, COVID, correct. Course, then yeah. COVID. So you know, it's a wonderful thing to discuss, and you know, otherwise we miss it many times. You know, the history is very important, and you say the approach is very important. Now we'll go for the next patient. Next patient, I'll go to Dr. Vinay Singh. Yes, this sir. is about 73-year-old patient. She came with a hypertrophic lichen planus, and she has taken all possible immunosuppressant available in our country, including azathioprine. And this patient came to my clinic. We did a biopsy because there are a lot of hypertrophic, and the biopsy came hypertrophic lichen planus with pseudo carcinomatous hyperplasia oh. uh, because of so many comorbidity we started this patient on tofacitinib even she was on 73 and you see uh, after two months she was doing very well but after third month she came with swelling of the right foot which was tender and painful so what do you think Sir, uh, probably and possibly because she's having so many comorbid conditions, we have to evaluate why she's developing unilateral. It was only on right yeah, foot. Unilateral, correct. Unilateral. unilateral probably some unilateral. infection. Probably some infection. Probably it's an infection. Probably some probably some embolism. Embolism. Yeah. Probably oh, it is yeah. either either there is uh, uh, some embolism, yes, thrombophlebitis. Because it is unilateral, so my my uh, DD would go into all those causes where unilateral swelling is there because it is not red. So I'll go for lymphatic swelling also. Some some cellulitis is also. Uh, so cellulitis. It, it was cellulitis. So yeah, next so question is: Are you going to continue tofacitinib or not? Yeah, sir, if her counts are, counts are uh, controlled and if cellulitis can be controlled with giving her antibiotics, you can give a pause for tofacitinib and then continue. Otherwise, when active infection is there, then I would not like to continue. Yeah, in any active, active infection, we have to stop it. Stop. Yeah. 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 So stop can you restart? Can you restart? Or stop. So when you are going to restart? Maybe after the infection subsides. Maybe after ten days. Yeah, after yes, two weeks, we, can, we, we restarted, we restarted and everything settled down. So the message yeah. is whenever there is any infection, you have to stop the drugs and you can restart, but with the lower doses. So what are the adverse effects? We know most of the things, these are the various adverse effects are there. So I'll, I'll go for the next uh, patient. This is one of the patient, one of the doctor, 60 year old male, hypertension, chronic renal disease, serum creatine is 5.5. He was not on dialysis, in spot creatine, creatine is 5.5. Recently diagnosed as a pulmonary cox, and he came with a bullous lesion to me. We did a biopsy. Biopsy shows the bullous pempicoid. So 
how you are going to treat this case dr uh, mysore what are the comorbidities he has pardon what are the comorbidities he has uh, he had hypertension he had chronic renal failure and he has developed pulmonary tuberculosis how severe is his bullous pemphigoid how many lesions uh, does he have bullous has? pemphigoid was quite disturbing him there are about 30 lesions total hmm okay so now since there are almost 30 lesions we do not manage it's not possible to manage him with topical drugs with no topical what about now dapsone is a good drug for him because yes. he has got hypertension pulmonary cough steroid is not a choice the same thing goes for azathioprine which is otherwise a very good drug mycophenol at mefetil that is one choice but dapsone doesn't have any effects any problems with any of these entities it's an old drug but used to work fairly well for bullous pemphigoid and it would be a very safe drug for this patient so far i have no experience if that is what you are trying to ask and in any case he has got cox so i would welcome the opinion of others my choice would be just dapsone here or even add minocycline tetracycline yeah. also works for bullous pemphigoid yeah i would go for rituximab because serum creatinine is high we are not supposed to give yeah uh anyway what anyway, i did uh, so can i make a comment here yes yes definitely okay so you know as 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 we know uh, you know tofasib has been used for various disorders now a bullous pemphigoid is not a condition where where i mean i know of it any any long term studies or any even short term studies have been done but yes, uh, but what i wanted to sort of uh, clarify here is probably you know look at uh, the creatinine clearance rather than the serum creatinine and yeah but that uh, is uh, see egfr is the indirect re uh, reading of the serum creatinine yeah because serum creatinine yeah. is more reliable than the egfr is a just calculation so manas what we did i started this patient on tofacidim the reason being during hypertension in a chronic even serum creatinine is high tofacidim can be given so can be given the only thing is sir the severe renal failures yes severe. yeah but, sir, but he has developed the pulmonary cox as well yeah yeah Black that's i'm coming to you that's i'm coming to you so tofacidim can be given so even there is a high reason, uh, high serum creatinine can tuberculosis. be given yeah then talking about a pulmonary but, sir, cox, tuberculosis dr venus yeah and the tuberculosis we treated with the amoxicillin sorry huh? moxifloxacin not with the rifampicin because rifampicin is there is a problem we treated and only yesterday got i'm treating this patient for last two years he is doing very well he is one of the doctor practicing so i thought i'll share my experience Because sir, sir, when the patient is in tuberculosis, when the patient is having tuberculosis, we cannot think of using pefacidim in this patient. Sir, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. No, 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 yeah i have seen out treated 20000 patient of tuberculosis every day i see three patient of tuberculosis in hiv of course my hiv practice so about tuberculosis ask me any questions you can be tofacidin can be given there is article which i i, I think i i skip that because there are too many slides and too many things can be given there is no harm but it has to give lower doses so this patient initially we gave and as dr venkatram says i have got tremendous experience about the dapson but dapson works for the maintenance and this patient unfortunately be, be, being a momidian his g6 pd was deficient i could not give but maintenance i am giving many patients i am very happy with the dapson but that is for the maintenance not for the acute uh, infection yeah in the dapsone and tetracycline would have been better for this for him sir as dr venkat has mentioned 
the absorption and tetracycline should have been uh, the choice. Yeah, but he, he had a G6 PD deficiency, being yeah. a Bombardian patient. There, the G6 PD deficiency is very high. Even, even, even topical yeah. corticosteroid. Yeah, the absorption syndrome will not occur because of G6 PD. It's topical corticosteroid with tetracycline can also work. The absorption syndrome, sir. Those, those but they cannot the give, no, he will start bleeding, no, but he will start right. bleeding, there is a deficiency. <laughs> And no, he recovers the but this experience deficiency will not give rise to Dapson syndrome. That is what I mean to say. Yes, yeah, yes. But first yes. thing we cannot give Dapson, so that question doesn't arise. So this patient is doing very well. He is under my treatment for last one and a half year. Yesterday so, only said, Doctor, you have saved my life. Anyway, so what is so the status of his uh, tuberculosis? But sir, but sir, yeah, tuberculosis is completely, completely cured. We are giving you know, maintenance. Maintenance, we are giving ethambutol and isonex. In this sir, type of patient, this is my experience with HIV. We give treatment for tuberculosis 18 months, not nine months or one year, 18 months, which is no book will agree and nobody will agree, but this is our personal experience. Because these are the patients, they are likely to get relapse or reactivation. So this patient we have to give for 18 months. So that is about the drug-drug interaction. Then coming to next one, I think we'll stop the patient. Oh, yeah. Okay, next. The same patient, he came with this type of rash. So when I think, what you think this rash? Can you see, Vinay, are you there? But sir, after how long, sir, sir how yeah. long after starting ATT did you? No, the, he developed this rash after five months. What do you think? Uh, any, anybody, if the Vinay is not there then? Sir, I'm here, I'm here, I'll come back. Sir. Okay, okay. Sir, I am not able to see the image. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, no. fine. He, oh, this, these are the herpes only, sir. This is herpes simplex. Group of vesicles on the erythematous base. So this is herpes simplex. If it is yes, only sir. limited to this part, it is herpes simplex. Okay, yeah. Herpes yeah, but this was her, but this was this was herpes zoster. Yeah, Could this was herpes. On anyway. which areas not. If it is segmental, then definitely herpes. Yeah, this is now herpes zoster. Yes, yeah, this but is awesome. this is this is conventional herpes zoster I've mentioned yes. because my experience with topocity name they get herpes zoster but the lesions are limited and less in number and the attack is mild. So I want your opinion, uh, Manas. Yes, sir. And where we give a cyclovir and if the a cyclovir. You can continue tofacitinib. That's what the literature says. Sir, if in case somebody gets, uh, sir, if in case somebody gets uh, um, herpes zoster while on tofacitinib, normally what I do is I yeah. give them IV acyclovir 10 milligram per kg body weight thrice a day. So that is what I normally follow if somebody on an immunosuppressive gets herpes zoster. So I don't rely on the oral drug. We give IV acyclovir in these cases. So oh, here I entirely agree, IVA cyclovir is not used by many, but any patient is severely immunocompromised, come with a herpes zoster, I think IVA is nothing like a IVA cyclovir. Even sometimes in herpes simplex or HSV also use IV if there is severe pain. Yes, so we'll go for the next patient. This is for Dr. Parsardi, this patient on tofacitinib. For atopic, he developed the circular lesions on the face. Of course, that is the tinea. So, how yes. are you going to manage this patient? He was having atopic dermatitis with tinea infection. Dr. Sapley. Uh, he developed one patch of tinea on the face. There was no other patch. Uh, no, it was tinea. Continue, if you want to continue tofacitinib, then you go for because you know tofacitinib interacts with any 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 drug which interacts with the CYP 304 or CYP C219, C219, they are known to interfere with tofacitinib because it may, they may increase the tofacitinib levels also. So correct, you can correct. go for a pulse therapy of fluconazole. That, that, that is a good option for in this patient along with topical antifungals. Sir, uh, yeah. Sir, why not use terbenafine? Terbenafine here. Yeah, terbenafine. Yes, correct. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yes, correct. Absolutely right. 
Yeah, we can use terbinafine, but fluconazole can be used because fluconazole metabolism with the CYP219 and yes. uh, topacidin with CYP3A4. So it can be used, but both can be used. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, this is, this is the atopic eczema, control of atopic eczema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. That's right. No, now, what I mean to say is, if yeah. the atopic eczema is very well controlled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very happy. He had extensive lesions. Now the few lesions are remaining on the... No, my, my, yeah. my point was, if the eczema was well controlled... Yeah, yeah. He was stop. very happy. In fact, he said, can I continue this drug? In fact, patient asked me. <laughs> now there is a second part to my this yeah. thing. If I can be allowed to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, definitely. Uh, uh, if the eczema is well controlled, then stop we can it. stop tofacitabine for some time, treat yes. the fungal yes, infection properly, then get back yes. to tofacitabine. Now yeah, I have that, completed my answer. Yeah, Please go ahead. Yeah, that, that can be also done. Yeah, because the pause can be given. There is no problem. See, this is another patient of mine because I'm following this patient for last three years and there are 450 patients of mine on, on tofacitabine. The last three years I'm following this. This patient, of late I've started seeing after two and a half or three years, this patient came with a papillary eruption. So, Dr. Mysore, what do you think this is? What are the primary indications for which tofacitabine was she given? Is, she had atopic and she is doing very well. Two and a half years. She is also that, old lady, about 76 year old lady. Couple of them look like vesicular lesions. Yes. No, they are inflamed papules because we thought we were trying to rule out the herpes simplex, but there are no yeah. vesicle. These are the papules, inflamed papules. I think picture it is not seen, for, but there are no vesicles. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Or the itchy? Uh, slight mild itching. Yeah. And how long did they persist? It is there for last almost. More than 15 days. Hmm. And only on this area, nowhere else? Yeah, a few lesions on the other part of the face. Only on the face. Hmm. Well, when I looked at it, I thought this was herpes. But now you say there are no vesicles. It's a papule. Yeah. I think then we should... Acneform lesions, yeah. lesions can happen. Yeah. Yes. So these are most likely acneform lesions. Is she applying any steroid also, topical steroid uh, also? Uh, uh, not in this area. Okay. Because so these, uh, these are either acneform or folliculitis. Folliculi yes, so even perioral yeah, dermatitis so, can happen. Yeah. Rosacea yeah, like lesion or perioral dermatitis? Perioral dermatitis. Yeah, so, Acne, you know, perioral dermatitis, both can be there. Yes. Yeah. So what he did with the scraping and it turned out to be uh, uh, demodex follicular. Demodex okay, that's policy. also, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, that is also a yes, correct, correct. So, I thought I'll just share my experience, nothing else. Yeah, this is the another patient where I'm not able to manage. She is a severely atopic, extensive, but uh, uh, last she is again two and a half years on tofacitinib because she has taken for last 10 years all sorts of immunosuppressive. But she developed tinea, we started fluconazole. Tinea started responding, but now she is coming with this papillary eruption on the face. So, what do you think? Sir, um, again, does she have itching, sir? Does she have itching? No, no itching. These are asymptomatic. So and I think slightly we... pigmented, slightly pigmented. So, probably acne form eruptions, sir. Probably acne form eruptions, which is... But there are no again. inflammation. There are no inflammation. Sir, I think this is plain warts. Yes, absolutely yeah, right. These are like the words, yes. Yeah. Pretty but you know, words. her IgE is 10,060. So I do not know how to manage this. So I want your help. I'm, I'm talking the real one. Huh? Uh, yes, on the left side. Now I can make out, if I expand it, now these are words. Yes, correct. I mean, right. yeah. yeah, in the uh, picture, uh, picture, they are not, not so clear. Do destructive yeah. therapy. She is not bothered about awards right now. Yeah. She is so why not do just standard destructive therapy? Which one? Either radio frequency, cautery, or I maybe carbon acid laser. No, no, no. Dr. Parsardi, she is worried yes. about her atopy. She gets severe itching. Okay. 
So ATOP, I do not know how to manage it because she has been given steroid, she has been cyclosporine, azotram, acid, all sorts of things are given. So why not dupilumab? Yeah, I have said yesterday I suggested her, and fortunately she can afford to bring it. So I given her and extended that. Uh, Dr. Saple, there is a yeah. message yeah. that you that uh, the questions from the WhatsApp group should be taken. There are about 15 questions there. Yeah, yeah. So now we'll stop it. And here, uh, okay? one more thing. What time yeah. are we finishing? It's 4.15 okay. now. I think uh, an yeah. another 20 minutes will finish no. and we'll yeah. start with the question. Thank you for reminding Dr. Mahesur. Uh, because at 4.30 I need to go. Yes, you're correct. correct. Now we'll take the questions. Uh, yeah. Questions, yeah. Anjali, can you read question? Okay, I'll read it. I'll read it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So uh -huh. Can topaslip be given with other immunosuppressives like methotrexate, azathioprine? I think the answer is very simple no, because at least as per the standard guidelines, other biologic and non biologic DMARDs are not supposed to be used. But as you have said, people have used methotrexate, but I normally don't use. The second Tophacid. question is can Tophacid Tophacid and methotrexate can be used, Dr. Manas. Yeah, so can be used, but not cyclosporin and azotaprin. No, no, but I tell you what, all but the rheumatologists I... use this in combination. Most no, of the no, no, that is okay. But if you for, if you follow the standard guideline, the non-biologic yeah, the tofacid can, can be used with methotrexate. Yeah, so me, 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 the standard guideline, if you see the if you see the author, the the, the the package inserts with these drugs that mentioned that mentions that non biologic demands yeah, cannot okay. be used. Yeah, but as okay. I mentioned, see, uh, uh, Manas, according to rheumatologists, topacidine and methotrexate can be combined, can be given. But as you said, we have to be careful when you are giving the two immunosuppressive drugs. Age group is important here. Very, age... very vigilant. Very no, vigilant. No, no, no. Age group is important here. That means yeah, it is in, not adult, good adult, in yeah. older individuals. You can use it in younger people like in alopecia areata, but in older individuals, we should yeah, not about, use it. Above 65, you should not use it. I agree with you. I agree. So Even methotrexate difficult. alone is difficult. Yeah, so, so that, we'll is, why, that next, is one thing which. Yeah, we'll be go for the next question. Can yeah, topocinomy combine with systemic steroid, Dr. Mysore? Yes, it can. It can be, okay. but one uh, has to doctor, be very careful. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, one has uh, to be very careful, and the indication should justify the need. Yes. Again, so, again, uh, it's probably. Again, <laughs> I will qualify that by saying that. Uh, again, what dosage one is using that is important. Intermittent therapy the, will be better. Intermittent yeah, therapy is, will be better. Yes, sir. It should not be a continuous therapy. It should yeah. be intermittent or oral mini pulse. We can use, and that also. The dose has to be for a very short duration for uh, steroids. It should not be very long duration. So because you see, the, the, disease, I, yes, correct. the message they, which should go away, go out of this group is that we should be we should be careful with older people. We should be careful with dosages of systemic steroids. Yes, we yes. Can't use use you know. Yeah, with, with the older people, we have to be careful all the time. Yes. I entirely agree. Then we'll go for the next question, uh, Doctor Vinay. Yes, what sir. are the doses in the pediatric age group? Sir, the doses, uh, either you use 5 milligrams in divided doses uh, above 6 years of age, not below 6 years of age, although, yes. although there are reports 2 years and above patients have been given. So it should be uh, unlike according cyclosporin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. According to the body weight they have to use. Yes, according to weight is 4 milligram or 2 milligram. Uh, two milligram. Then we'll go for yes. the next question. From Dr. Pyle Oza, can we add if the patient is already in top of city or get some acute flare up? Of course, acute flare up, we can increase the dose, no problem. Next, Satyadarshi Patnaik, is there any comparison study on topical tacrolimus and topacitinib? Can both be prescribed to some patient? Topical tacrolimus and topacitinib. Any, Sir, any I have not use used both. I have not used both, but I have used uh, them in different patients. Yeah, the topicals one have come recently, so we have to yeah. try. Then only we will be able to tell. Yes. But usually, why, why should we combine both tacrolimus and trifacinib? Either the tacrolimus or trifacinib, I think. 
yeah i think her question was his question was comparison there is no yeah. comparative study yeah. of these two no drugs problem. as yet no, no. yeah i think uh, next question is from dr anuj kumar how long we can use tofacitinib so it has been 6 and 1/2 years opinion alopecia areata i mean alopecia total is cases i used for 2 years um so yeah, that is what i used so far um, maybe it varies so from people i think the experience on use of tofacitinib has been people have used it for 5 6 years as well so people yes, it correct. has been used. Yes. Yes. The only thing is dosage is here, and therefore we normally what what I have done is, for example, alopecia areata. I start at a particular dose, let's say five milligram twice a day, bring down the dose, and continue at a lower dose in case the patient relapses, then go up again, and control, and then go down again. So probably play with the doses a little bit rather than continuously use the same dose. Absolutely correct, sir. Absolutely correct. See, as yeah. as with any drug, it is always difficult to question how long. How long? We can only talk talk about how long we have used. Mm. So I'm yeah. sure with time we'll become more and more confident. So yeah, we'll continue so... to use it, and so as long as so there is an interesting question. Yeah. So Doctor Mysur, we are saying. Use as as long as there is no trouble from the drug, correct? And the that, results are that, there. That is the answer for the time being. But I am sure yes. we'll have better answers based on data with time. Yeah, the rheumatology data. They have the rheumatology data. They have given more than ten years. Correct, correct. <laughs> Sir, there is a good question about TB gold test, Doctor Manas. Yes. Yeah. When when if the TB gold test is positive, but all other tests to find out TB is negative, then can we prescribe tofacitinib or not? If IGRA is positive. Okay, okay. So uh, so the 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 the, the uh, therefore we must be here understand the value of these respective IGRA. tests. IGRA. Okay, the value of these respective tests and how to sort of interpret them in our scenario. Mm-hmm. uh you see he says the other tests are negative i expect what he means to say is that the montu test is negative the chest x ray is normal, normal. Uh, and of course he is also done um, uh, probably a hrct and the hrct is negative now that basically now the thing is in these situation we must look at the patient's immune status Because in a in a situation, uh, I think Manas, the time is short. I would like okay. to answer this question. See, IGRA test is useful only European or the Western country. Yes, where they do not take this BCG vaccine. If the BCG vaccine is given, IGRA test can be come positive. Even there is no latent tuberculosis. So in our country, most of the patient they have taken BCG. So it has got hardly any value in our country. Is it okay? Even, Can even, we even the tuberculosis? Even the Montu test value is a bit of a problem yeah. here. No, no, no Montu test. Them. Montu yeah. test has got very high value. Only HIV clinician understand. Non-HIV that pulmonologists they do not understand and they are not going to accept. That is a controversial. But as a HIV clinician, Montu test is strongly positive. That means, as Manas says, you get HRCT. You'll find somewhere some focus. But strongly positive, not just positive. Or, or one thing, Doctor Saple, you can add INH and rifampicin for two months. Yes, for two months. There's another option left. Yes, yes correct. That's right. Yeah. Now, so I think, for- sir, the problem here is, sir, if, yeah. if you allow me, the problem here is that we, if you repeat a Montu test, its value keeps getting negated. That is the biggest problem. You see, that means a Montu test is good to be done once. But the problem with it is getting repeated. If you repeat that Montu test in the next year, the previous Montu will potentiate it. So that is yeah. the problem. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, yeah, that can happen. That can happen. In these cases, yeah. yeah, it is very important. In cases, I think the time is limited. There are still some questions. So we should move. Yeah, yeah. I will go for the other question. Because no other says, chance of relapse after drug is stopped. What are the chance? Because chances are very high. Gautam Sorkar, how long you stop us? We are we, you that you can go for even ten years. Between double curve, stop us. Now is palmo plantar psoriasis. Any experience is very good according to me. Anybody palmo plantar psoriasis? It has got good results in PPK. It has got good results. 
I have used it. Next question is from Dr. Gite. Can we use in a spontaneous articaria? Yes. I've used. I've used, guess, sir. I've used. Yeah, I've used yeah, in so chronic spontaneous artic area when the other drugs were not working. It has been good result. Next question is: If there is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, can you use? Of course, sir. It it can be used because in renal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually, creatinine levels slightly they may rise, but uh, I don't. I don't yes. Need contraindication. Yes. Yeah, so again, but, uh, look at look at clear uh, look at the creatinine clearance in the GFR in these cases. So that yes. should be not that look at the serum yeah. creatinine. Yeah, proteinuria and all these. But we as a HIV physician, we do lot of uh, renal biopsy, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. The one of the common cause is a drug induced. So first we have to rule out the drug induced, then others. Okay. Next question from Renuka. Patients are young, either unmarried or married, yet to complete family. Whether we got to avoid these drugs or we can continue. Continue. Child, you know, no, no. childbearing potential better not to. Childbearing potential. Suppose we, we, we are not aware of planning, that. Correct? If planning to become pregnant, something like that in pregnancy and breastfeeding, we are not supposed to give it. No, no, no. That is we, different. We that is different. Yeah. No, pregnancy, in the family, we yeah. can give it. Pregnancy, like again, risk like, yeah. ratio, pregnancy risk benefit ratio, but then I think the question has got to do with whether this drug is teratog uh, this drug has got any issues with teratogenicity or not. Correct, correct. Yes, so, correct. Like a methotrex said, yeah. Yeah. Not study, but animal studies, animal studies in higher doses have proven that there is there, there, there is some test results, but not they didn't try in human beings. Uh, at least I, I do think not we have know. finished all the yeah. questions. So, I think uh, we have last, finished last all one, the last one. Gaurav Nana Sahib Salve is topically useful in lichen plano so, no, pilaris sir, patient. Yeah. Infertility is the issue. I think they talk about infertility. Okay. Uh, so, I do not is, know. I think no, I will not associated with any infertility. I think okay. the question was to do with infertility. Yes, correct. Absolutely right. Yes. So infertility so is not known with tofacitinib. It is not known. It is not known, sir. There is one more question. Safety of tofacitinib in males who are still planning to have a family. We can use. Dr. Payaloya has asked this question. Uh, tofacitinib in males who are still planning to have a family can be used. There is no question of infertility with this drug. So far, not reported. Can be used. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I think we can. We yeah. conclude, Dr. Mysore. Yeah, I think, yes. I think there is no. Thank you very much. And I must thank you, all of you, opinion leader, all of you, all audience who have mis listened to us and the hetero or genics or organizing this. And thank you very I'll much. Hand thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'll hand over all to the hetero. I think one second, the hetero people want to yeah. give. Thank you so very much, sir. I think this uh, this was very interesting, and we are all evolving with this molecule tofacitinib. I feel the discussion which has led today, uh, we will surely have another another round of uh, such webinar wherein a lot of interesting facts has come out. And I hope this clinical discussion happened today will be helpful for uh, each and every one clinical practice. And we extremely ha happy to have you all here, and you have taken off uh, your time for this event. Thank you so very much. And thanks to all the audience also. Thank thanks you. Thank, lot, you thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye, -bye. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarkar sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, now we are breaking thank for you, tea. Sir. Anybody is having going to have tea? Please join me because yeah. I am going to prepare tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure it will be very tasty. Thank you, sir. <laughs> then we need the flight tickets also. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask Anjali. I'll ask Anjali. Any any day, any day. That will be very delightful. Thank okay. you.